Um, my name is Ryan Burke, and we are going to be, like we talked about, just discussing the different solutions that VMware's got for backup and disaster recovery. Um, there's a couple of different products that we're going to cover. Um, basically, they have lots of different solutions, and sometimes it's a little bit confusing in terms of the actual uh, what should you use the, where and when should we use it and what tool does what um, and there's different 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 slides and stuff like that so we've got it split up into it um, kind of moving forward uh, a little bit about new horizons first um, you know we've kind of I'm a VMware technical instructor so I'm a VMware certified instructor I teach several different classes um, not just necessarily VMware I also teach uh, a couple of Hyper-V classes as well but my specialty is mostly virtualization um, today we're going to cover basically it's, this class is mostly meant for someone who is, uh, you know, either in a, in a, in a VMware technical role. Um, you know, the, the webinar is kind of, like I said, it's, a, it's an overview of some of the VMware solutions. Um, a lot of the discussions that we will, we will talk about, they do essentially map to various classes that, that, that we offer. Um, and basically, we're going to talk about the importance of backups in VR. So one of the, one of the big things is, uh, when it comes down to it, VMs are files, and they're, you know, once you get to the VMs, uh, they're very easy to back up. So one of the big challenges in physical environments uh, is, you know, is backing up. You know, no one really loves to talk about backups. It's not one of those glorious, awesome things that everyone really loves to chat about. But it's, it's it, it needs to be done. And the best part about, you know, once you get to a virtualized environment, especially in a VMware environment, there's a lot of tools that you can use. So we'll talk about SRM and the different different forms of replication. So. Who is New Horizons? Uh, we'll go through the presentation, and then uh, if you, anybody has any questions uh, and things like that, uh, we'll cover them all at the end. So, uh, New Horizons is a proven worldwide training provider. So we 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 cover a lot of stuff. Uh, we've got different learning solutions. Uh, we do instructor-led training. We do online live stuff. I, I do a lot of online live myself. Um, do do some traveling here and there, and do do in-person training as well. Um, but the, the platform we use uh, to do the online line stuff is actually really is really great. I, uh, if there's anybody who is really truly interested in, in VMware training, it's a, it's a fantastic resource. We actually do the same type of classes online as we do in person. You get access to the same labs as you do in person. Uh, I love the platform. Uh, we use Adobe Connect for that. It works great. Um, so we've got, uh, you know, it's a very large international network, 2,100 classrooms, 2,400 instructors in 56 countries. Um, and typically 3 million students a day, of days of training per year. Um, like I said, we've got the different flexible methods of, of doing instructing. So instructor-led, uh, that's a very popular way. We do online live as well. And then, you know, obviously, if we've got training that needs to be customized, we can do that as well. So I was actually kind of working up uh, this past week. We had a, a client who was wanting some, uh, some various training, and they wanted to be able to go through the, the traditional install configure manage class that VMware has. And then they also wanted to kind of, you know, cover some custom stuff. Uh, so we're kind of working out that uh, at this point, but it is possible. Um, you know, I always, you know, people who come through my class, there's a lot of stuff that I'll typically will, I'll add in, uh, you know, if there's, if, if there's different discussions and there's, you know, we have lots of different things and uh, we can easily come up with customized stuff. Um, lots of different vendor partnerships as well. So uh, I, I, I am primarily on the Microsoft and the VMware side. Uh, I can speak to that. Um, but uh, there are other classes, you know, in terms of, you know, Citrix, Red Hat, you know, the, the, the IBM stuff. We've got Adobe training. We've got Cisco training. Um, all different kinds of training that's available to you if you're, if you're interested in such things. So um, basically what we're going to do at this point is we are going to discuss the VMware solutions. So um, kind of introduce New Horizons there, and I really want to get into the, the actual core content. Um, so... In a, in a virtualized environment, you've got various ways to actually back up. So we could go through and we can do this. Uh, we can do backups at the VM level. Uh, we, can do, we can do backups at the data store level. We can back up things at the data center level. Um, you pretty much have to come up with what you think is best for you. And, and that's, a, that's a very hard, difficult challenge sometimes. Um, if you've been doing this in your physical environment, uh, we, we have some downsides to, to traditional backups. So in, in a lot of environments with the physical side of the house, we have, you know, what we do is we pop an agent in, inside of, a, inside of a, a server and we copy everything out over a network connection. And, you know, that's fine in a physical environment. With virtualized environments, though, we want to think about, you know, doing different things. That is extremely important. So, you know, the downsides to traditional backup 
you know, you have a backup agent that runs, and, and that's what we've got in our environments, in, in, in a physical environment. You have the OS, you've got your standard, you know, x86 64-bit platform that, you know, you would have under a server side of the house, then it copies the traffic, you know, over a network connection. Um, the big problem, though, is that network connection. So your users, uh, your users who are connecting into this, um, and you guys have probably ran into this. I'm assuming that if you're inside of your environment and you're dealing with backups, this is a, it's one of those things that it just happens. You know, you have a backup window. Nobody wants to deal with backup windows. It's it's not very fun to say, okay, you can't get you can't get access to your data for this hour or you know basically uh, you know four hour time frame in the middle of the night. Yeah, it would be nice to do backups in the middle of the day, but a lot of people actually don't do backups in the middle of the day for the fact that you know it's tough to manage. So we have all this data that's that, that's backed up. It's copied over the network connection and it goes out, and we want to back it up to you know to tape or to disk, and you know maybe at that point ship it off site you know, somewhere. And then if we want to go and do we want to do a restore, if we want to do a restore of that, we have to go and we have to dig up the tape and we have to copy it all back over. And um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's very hard to manage. Um, well, with VMs, you know, those are the, the, the big thing is we get the flexibility. Um, it, a VM is a file. A virtual machine is a file. So it's really, uh, if you compare them, there's no difference between a virtual machine disk file and a VM and a, and a uh, you know, basically a Word document. Uh, you know, Microsoft Office Word document. Uh, a file is a file. You can you can copy them over. You can you can put them on a USB stick, uh, and sneaker net them across the room, or you can use uh, you know the various different platforms that VMware has. Now, obviously, nobody really wants to sneaker net anything anymore. Um, you know, we have vMotion. We're really not going to cover vMotion because that's really not a way to back up VMs. But you also have that as well. So you can you can live migrate machines from one ESXi host to the other. Some people think that that's a backup, but it truly isn't a backup. Um, you have high availability, so if a host crashes, it'll restart it over. Um, but your, your traditional backups are, are actually copying the file from point A to point B and having a, you know, a completely disconnected uh, environment. So we run into a lot of you know, downsides. You, you end up, if we go back to not just the network connection, we have excessive physical resource use that is actually out and, and it's generated. Uh, by all the VMs. So if you if you do exactly what you're doing in a physical environment and you do it in your VM environment, more than likely you are going to find yourself in a spot to where not only you're using most of your network connection, but you're also probably using a lot of your CPU use because that agent is having to actually do the backup and all that kind of stuff inside of the VM. So if you have a hundred VMs, if you think about the problem here, if you have 100 VMs and you use net backup, for instance, we'll, we'll, we'll say net backup because that's a very popular one. But if you use net backup inside of your actual VMs like you were running in the physical world, all of your VMs are running on one ESXi host or two ESXi hosts or 10 ESXi hosts. Those agents that are installed, they monopolize. They actually, you know, they, they take, if you're doing all backups at once, you might have 15 machines that are doing backups and you might have another uh, 20 machines that are not doing backups. Well. If they're all doing it at the same time, we potentially have bottlenecks. Uh, you have you know, CPU resources that simply don't, they're not there. You know, other VMs don't have the other capacity to actually go out and, and inside of the ESXi host, they can't do anything. So we really want to avoid that if at all possible. I've seen, I've had lots of students in my classes who came through when it came, you know, comes to the backups. Um, you know, this is one of those things where they, well, we were doing this, we're doing exactly like we've done uh, when it comes down to it, we've done exactly what we've do, we're doing in the physical environment, and that's 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 the, kind of the incorrect way of doing it. Um, you know, I/O resources that's important. You got to think about your disk. You have to think about your storage. You've got to think about your network. And if everybody's doing and using traditional networks and traditional backups and traditional storage, it'll be saturated. There's no doubt in my mind that it will absolutely be saturated. So a few virtualization advantages, uh, some big, 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 big advantages of when you actually move in uh, and you actually use a tool. There's, a, there's actually a tool called uh, vSphere, um, you know, data, you know, data recovery or data protection, uh, which we'll talk about. One of the big benefits is that there's no backup agents needed. Um, you know, there's nothing that you have to you have to install inside of your VMs. Literally nothing. Um, it uses a thing called change block tracking and it uses data deduplication. So your, once your VM is a VM, what happens is you, you use this uh, appliance and you import it into your infrastructure and at that point it uses, it uses snapshot functions. 
Now, first off, I, I, I want to make sure that I stress this, is that VMware snapshots are not backups. You should never, ever, ever use a native snapshot as a backup. I've had lots of, you know, this is a big discussion. This is one of my, you know, if you have me in class, I'll end up having smoke coming out of my ears because it drives me crazy. Um, you know, it's, I've seen, it's, it's, a, it's a mistake. Uh, I, I've seen where people have had 10 different snapshots. Snapshots are a performance hindrance. If you have, you know, think about it, if you have 10 different snapshots on a VM and it has to read through 10 disks and then write it out to the 11th disk. So it's reading, 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 and then writing. You know, it's, it's a performance interest. We don't want to leave snapshots out there for a long time. They just grow and grow and grow. They can eat up lots of data source space. So when I, when I initially say that this, this particular snapshot solution, that this particular backup tool uses snapshots, people go, oh, my gosh, you know, I don't want to use snapshots because isn't that bad? Uh, it is if you just leave snapshots out there. Um, if you, if you, this is a temporary snapshot. So the snapshot is in place, but it only leaves the snapshot there when it's actually doing the backup. So it actually goes out in this in this case, and it actually you know it actually removes it as soon as it's done. That's the that's the important thing. So it goes out and it quickly takes a snapshot. It does the backup and it actually copies the the data over. Uh, it has the ability to thin provision virtual disks. That's a big one. It's a huge one. So you can have a a VM that has thick provision disks. So you can have it could be using 60 gigs of storage, and then your backup. Uh, you know, it all, it'll, it's going to effectively use a thin provision disk. So you can store your backups in thin provision format, and then you can restore it as a thick provision disk if you need it to. Um, and it provides both image level and file level resource. So, you know, when, when it comes down to, you know, the particular tools that we're using, it has a, a, the ability to, so let's say you have, we'll call him that guy. You have that guy who every Thursday he comes to your desk and he says, hey, I'm sorry, I did this last week, but I deleted this, this file that I, that's really important. Uh, I deleted this file that's on my machine, um, and <laughs> I need you to restore it. Well, instead of having to restore the entire VM, you can actually mount the backup, and you can say, okay, uh, which file did you delete? All right, let's go out, let's, let's, let's mount it, and then you can go out to his desktop, and there it is. And then you can say, don't do that again, and then you know that he's going to come to you next week, and you know, hey, I'm sorry, I did it again. Um, it just makes it super, super nice for you as an admin to actually go out uh, and do file level restores. So you can actually go out and just, instead of having to do the whole image, you tell, you know, it's a lot faster to just grab one file off, which is, which is very nice. So if you're wondering how this is all done, you know, some of the, we've talked about the advantages of, of virtualization backup. We talked about the downsides of your traditional backup in a virtual infrastructure. It's done through a thing called the vStorage APIs. So what's cool about this, actually, is that VMware has a tool that's called Data Recovery Apply, uh, VMware Data Recovery, and we'll talk about that, you know, and I'll lay it out here on, for you on the next slide. But the reason I talk about the APIs is that you have choices when it comes to VMware backup. One of the reasons I think VMware has a huge threshold and, 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 and a, a large market share is that there's lots of different APIs that they have available, and it also goes out, and they have lots of third-party tools. So the first, th first thing is that the API is available for third parties to write tools. So you guys might have heard about things uh, that say, um, oh, they could be, you could have Veeam. Veeam is a very popular one. They're a backup utility. You could have Commvault. You could have another third party tool. And you could pay for that, all right? So you can go out and you can actually pay for those, those types of utilities. So you could pay your, your licenses. Everybody licenses it differently, so I always tell everybody to go contact whoever you want for third parties. Now, VMware is obviously not a backup company. They, don't, they do virtualization. They don't make backup tools. Now, what's really cool about their particular tool, and a lot of people don't, they don't know this, but they actually give you a free license that actually allows you to back up up to 1,000 VMs. So you can back up up to 1,000 VMs for free, uh, essentially, as long as, you, as long as you have the license. You, don't, you can't have essentials. Um, you can't, so that means you can't have the bare bones license, but if you've purchased any license above that, VMware gives it to you. You can go out and you can download this appliance and you can use it. And a lot of people don't know that, that and that you can save some money essentially if you do that. So, you know, what these things do is they allow you to take the load off of the VMs and off of the host and it consolidates it to one particular VM. So you have this virtual appliance that's doing all of the work and it protects the VMs. And it can use the, you, can, you can have shared storage, you can have local storage, you can have fiber channel, NAS, anything. 
um, NFS, doesn't matter where you're storing these things, but you can take the actual load away and, and run it inside of an appliance. So essentially how this works, and, and we're, and we're going to talk about the VMware tool here. The, the, there are, just know that there are third-party tools that also use the API. And the thing that you have to remember is that the VMware tool also uses its own API. So if you go out and you purchase a tool through Veeam or through Commvault or through any third-party utility, I don't have favorites. It's basically they, they all do the same thing because they're all through the same API. What you're paying for is you're paying for an interface. You're paying for an interface. So you're, it's more than 1,000 VM. Maybe you have a, a massive environment. You have more than 1,000 VMs. Um, you know, in that case, the, the, you would probably want to go with a third-party tool. But this is a, an appliance that you know, is included. Um, so how this whole thing works is you have to have vCenter. So basically, the gist of it is, is that if you have the free version of ESXi, you, you can't do this. So you have to have vCenter. So you've purchased vCenter. You've gone through that. Um, there's a plug-in. So you, in the vSphere client, you have the plug-in, and that gives you the ability to do the backups. And I mentioned earlier on the last slide that you have a virtual appliance. There. You have this VM that you import into your infrastructure. That virtual appliance right there is actually doing all of the backup processing. And you can see that we have some deduplicated storage that's stored. So we have a, you know, from a SAN of some sort, we have all of our backups being stored on that dedupe uh, storage, and we can, we can replicate it off if we want to. And then we have all of our VMs that we want to back up. So all those virtual machines across the host can be set up, and all those VMs can then be replicated through that virtual appliance. And uh, you know, that's, that's, that's how it works. You have a, a virtual appliance, and you have that plug-in. And at that point, you can then start backing up VMs. And it will take, so it will essentially take one snapshot uh, of, of the VM, and it will go to the next VM, and it will go to the next VM. You can specify which VMs you want. You can take groups. So you can actually take a group of VMs. So if you have a bunch of important stuff that you really want, uh, you can go out. And let's say you want to back up all of your SQL boxes. You can do that. Uh, if you want to back up uh, all of your web servers, you can do that. Or maybe you, have a, you, know, you want to do various domain controllers. It uses volume shadow copy service to actually go out and, and find a good stopping point in the VM so you don't have any broken backups. Uh, so one of the big things of the snapshots is that you can always run into potential issues with them not being able to be stored. But it uses the, the, the shadow copy service to actually go in and find a good breakpoint for the VMs uh, so they can go out and they can you know, essentially you know, restore them easily. Because uh, well, what's the point of doing backups if you can't restore them? You know, that's, that, that's, this, is, this is all good for nothing if you can't restore them. So we want to get good, good backups. So you can, do, you can go out. You've got multiple different choices as well. So another tool, uh, you, have, you can use VMware Data Protection, or Data Recovery. You'll often, so the reason I say that, VMware Data Protection slash Data Recovery, VMware's marketing team, they've kind of flipped this back. It's, you guys know how it is with IT stuff. They change this stuff all the time. So they changed the name of it. So you might hear it referenced as VMware Data Recovery. You might hear it referenced as Data Protection. It's effectively the same tool. Um, you've got to go out and um, you know, look for that. Now, there's also other utilities that you can use that have nothing to do with the actual backup tools. What we just talked about was VM-level backup. So if you want to pick out a VM, you, know, you, know, you can do it on site, and it's done. Now, you can also, there's another tool called vSphere Replication. That is also free. A lot of people don't realize that. But what the replication does is it actually goes out and it will replicate a VM from, from site A to site B. So instead of what we, so basically this right here, guys, this is one site. This is an individual, single, one site only. You're gonna, everything that you're going to have is on one site. So you can back up your VMs all day long, but you can't really move them very easily to, a, to an off-site location. Well, with vSphere Replication, you can do that. So you can actually set up vSphere Replication, and you can say, instead of backing up this VM, I want to replicate this VM. All right. So when you replicate it, you have two different choices. You can do it at the VM level, or you can do it at the array-based replication. Now, the array-based replication, I will tell you right now, that is an added cost. That is not a, that is not a free tool. The array-based replication is something that you purchase when you actually buy Site Recovery Manager. And that's a tool, and the Site Recovery Manager is a class that I teach. It's an add-on product. Um, you know, it, it, it's a, the class for Site Recovery Manager is a two-day class, um, and it's dedicated just to that. So you, st you stack it on top of your vSphere environment. Um, and it gives you the full-blown site disaster recovery utilities. So if you've ever wanted to say, I'm going from, uh, I want to fail over from Site A to Site B, and then I want to live in Site B for a little bit, 
I've actually had some students before who said, you know what, uh, when Hurricane Sandy came through, we had stuff and we had to actually fail over. So they had stuff in New York, and they had a backup data center in Oklahoma. Um, and he, they said, well, and basically we failed over. So we clicked our, we, we went through, we clicked the button, we lived it, we lived it. So we actually were able to complete and finish our business uh, and go from, you know, you know, from New York to Oklahoma. And then what was interesting about their scenario was they also, from Oklahoma, Oklahoma's data center backed up to Las Vegas. So they were moving their data all across the United States and living out of it, uh, essentially for a, a permanent time frame. And then when it was done, they failed over from Oklahoma back to, to, to New York. Now, if they needed to, they could have failed over from New York to Oklahoma and then said, you know what, there's a, there's a, we've got some severe weather in Oklahoma, and that's also not going to work, so we'll fail over to Las Vegas. Las Vegas, believe it or not, of all places, is actually a hotbed for data, data centers. There's a lot of data centers, especially VMware vCloud data centers for like third tool, third parties. There's a lot of data centers in Vegas because they have the best weather and they don't really have, they're not prone to any sort of you know, weather changes. There's a bunch of stuff, um, believe it or not. Um, so in that case, they have multiple places. And what's neat about Site Recovery Manager is you can actually live out of it. So you can, you know, one of the big problems with site failover is that how do you go back to site A? So if you fail over from site A to site B, how do you actually back up, you know, go back over? That's why Site Recovery Manager has a cost. Everyone wants to know, why is it, why is it called? vSphere replication is free. Replication, that goes from A to B, all right? But there's manual processes that you have to do. So you have to set up the network. You're going to have to figure out a way to get it over to back to site A. Whereas with Site Recovery Manager, it's done. You know, you, you just click the button. As soon as you have it all properly set up, you can click a button and then go, literally go off for lunch, and you're done. So you have the homework that you have to do essentially beforehand, but once, once, you're, once you have that problem, you know, you can worry about bigger and better things if you're truly having a, a failover. Um, so how replication works is you are literally copying the VM from the source to the target. That's it. All right? that's, that's what you get. So you have a replication appliance. So just like the data protection appliance, you have to download from VMware a replication machine, and it actually goes out, and you have to pick out your VMs that you want. You don't have to replicate everything. I mean, it's not required to replicate everything. You can pick one or two VMs that are important. The other thing that's a big difference with Site Recovery Manager as well is Site Recovery Manager allows us to go out, and we can effectively do the whole data center, All right, so from source to target. Now, if you ever needed to recover for some reason, you know, you needed to go through, you can right click, go to recover of a VM, select the target folder, and then go to the resource and hit finish. So, you know, if, let's say you're, you're on your, you had a problem with, uh, with uh, your environment from site A to site B and your VMs, you're trying to power them on, then you can actually recover them uh, on site B, and in that case, you're good to go. Now, everyone wants to know, you know, if we compare them, you know, what, how, why do we pay for SRM? And, and why is vSphere replication free? Well, some common functionality between the two is they both replicate. Uh, you get the application quiescence, so it's going to find a good breakpoint. You're going to get clean backups. Um, so some things that right now uh, you only get with vSphere replication is the web clients. So the site recovery manager, you still have to use the old Windows clients. It's not for the, uh, the web client. Uh, just yet they are the new versions I know that VMware is working on uh, support the web client so it's just a matter of uh, getting the new versions out there uh, and then some site recovery manager specific functions so some of the big these are the reasons that you purchase site recovery manager it gives you a full DR orchestration you literally can click a button and everything can live out of V and then go, go over to A you can do recovery planning so you can simulate failovers you can repeat it you can do a full DR test if you want you can do the full site or the partial site failover um, you know, you can do multiple VMs at the same time. It has its own API, and it works with array replication. That's the big thing. So you have to remember there's two different ways of replication. You've got vSphere replication, and that does at the individual VM levels. So it has to copy the VM over, and that actually occurs through ESXi. So that actually, the hypervisor has to do more work. If you have array-based replication, it's done on these storage slides. So it's done on the SAN, and that allows you to actually go out uh, and, and effectively copy the VMs from one particular storage device to the other storage device without VMware even having to know about it. So it, it keeps your environment a little bit more, I would say, performing adequately. Now, nothing necessarily wrong with vSphere replication either. You can, you can use that if, with SRM. SR, it actually comes with SRM as well. So when you purchase SRM, you, can, you get the free version of 
uh, replication, and you can also use array, array based replication. So some key points really to finish up, uh, you know, when, you, when you plan your backup strategy, you've got to make sure that you're aware of the different techniques that complement the virtual infrastructures. There's all different kinds of them. Uh, data recovery, it is an agentless, so you don't have to put any backup agents. That is, that is what we use for actual VM level backup inside of a data center. It's a Linux based appliance um, and it recovers and backs up the VMs. And data recovery uses dedupe store to make efficient use of the backup storage. And it can be, you know, data can be pulled back by the, you can do the full VM if you want. You can say, you know what, so and so screwed up the C drive, let's just do the C drive, we don't need to worry about anything else. Or you want to do it per file. So like I said, you can mount the file and actually go through there and, and you're ready to go. Uh, and then vSphere replication, it can be used to protect virtual machines as part of a disaster recovery strategy. You know, yeah, replication is, a, is, an, is an important component of a DR plan. And you know, what's cool about it is that it kind of gives you an introduction to it. You don't have to purchase Site Recovery Manager, but it is a next logical step for people who are wanting to do full-blown failover. So replication is free, and you can use it to go from Site A to Site B. But you know, there's different manual things, whereas with SRM, once it's done, you can click buttons and you're done. You, you know, it's the difference between going through and doing things a little bit more manually or Site Recovery Manager you know, it goes out and you can use that array-based replication. It kind of helps, it kind of helps the failover processes and it kind of helps the autom automation. So, do we have any questions? Any questions? We kind of covered a lot there. Um, I kind of pulled some information about, so this was, it kind of covered uh, a little bit about SRM, a little bit about replication, a little bit about data recovery. So all of those different utilities that are out there, those are just VMware tools. Um, the data recovery stuff is more or less covered in the ICM class. Um, we don't have a dedicated class for that. Um, it's covered as kind of a module. Uh, and then we talk about replication as well in the ICM class. And then we have a, a site recovery manager class that's dedicated for, for SRM. So any, uh, any questions at all? So I have a question that says, can I get a copy of these slides for later reference? And we will be posting them on the, on the internet on SlideShare. And I will have, uh, if you contact New Horizons, they can uh, give you the link to that. Sure, absolutely. I'll get them to you. Any other questions? All right. I have a comment that says... I very, think that about wraps it up. Uh, I have a comment that says, nicely done. Thank you for the great presentation and looking forward to my upcoming classes. All right, sounds good. Hope to, uh, if you're taking VMware classes, I will probably see you soon. <laughs>